let's just say uh, for an operating perspective now, that pain is the actual experience of having been hurt. It's the actual upsetness uh, that arises directly from what's happened to us. It's the physical pain, it's uh, perhaps the emotional impact of losing a loved one or having been hurt badly. Um, and we're just going to add to that that pain uh, could be easily uh, uh, in, could easily include the notion of trauma memories because, um, and this is a whole separate topic, but uh, although there are many ways those of us who have been hurt suffer or, or are in pain, uh, one of the central ways in which we uh, experience these things is that we have had the unfortunate biological evolution as a human that when we get hurt we generally don't forget it. And actually what we do in really stressful circumstances is our brain does a couple fancy little things and those memories become especially powerful. Uh, they don't metabolize very well. They sit there and when they're triggered they emerge as if they were happening again. Um, this kind of emotional distress, which we'll talk about some here, is not uh, the sort of existential distress or even depression or anxiety as it would describe sort of broader you reacting to what's happened to you. This is just the direct straight ahead effects of trauma. You know that feeling that when people criticize you and you get really mad, you know in some part of your guts, this is not about now that much? It doesn't help, by the way, when you've been in therapy forever, you're going, oh, come on now, don't have a reaction to this. Oh, come on now. <laughs> and then my favorite in relationships, don't say that. <laughs> don't say it. Oh, I said it. Ah. Right? So the intermediate state of, of this is <laughs> that you're still reactive. It's just now you know that you're being reactive. And it hurts even more. It's actually a very good, it's a very good sign. It means you, you're, you're, going, you're, you're moving along because that disparity between what you're doing and what you know you're doing is a very helpful step. But it hurts, right? We're back to pain again. Right? So a lot of what reactivity is, is a combination of previous stuff being activated by current stuff. Because the relational world is how we are hurt, and the relational world is where we're getting a lot of this stuff. And the fact that a lot of people who have been hurt early on developmentally don't develop a pretty good affect regulation repertoire and may have a little bit more of a twitchy psychobiology. So they're going, oh, bummer, crash. The other person's in crash in the context of having been blamed for things, having memories of bad things happening, having the trash cr trigger early distress, which floods into current awareness, and they may not have as much ability to regulate that emotional distress. This, those three things is pretty much uh, sort of summarize how we could look at the generalized effects of trauma. Uh, just about any symptom you could find in trauma would be in one of those three. For instance, that first one, You'd find post-traumatic stress disorder, for example, condition, anxiety, and other kinds. Cognitive distortions would, would be all the negative thinking we do about ourselves as trauma survivors, as well as the emotional states like depression, which can arise from it. Affect regulation problems can show up as borderline lability, extreme reactivity, uh, and then the need to engage in other behaviors to distract yourself. Because one of the problems of not having much ability to regulate your emotional state is you then have to find something else to regulate your emotional state, which is usually sex, drugs, self-mutilation, binging, purging, punching people out, you know, the usual stuff. The central problem is I hurt a lot and I don't have internal machinery to fix that pain so I'll do whatever I have to do in the external world to bring that pain away. What's the bad news? It's extreme, looks scary, can hurt you, can hurt society. Uh, another part of the bad news is our understanding of what those things tend to be borderline symptoms which we, the minute we go down that path I believe we reduce the chances we can help you with your problem. But if we start to see that as an adaptive strategy to deal with the hand that we've been dealt in life, then maybe what we could do is not liposuction the self-mutilatory urge out of your brain, but instead reduce your need to have to use it. And ironically, how would we do that? We could do that by processing the memories so they don't hurt so bad, or we could do that by increasing your ability to handle the memories and then you wouldn't have to engage in that behavior. So all this stuff, all of these things, relate to mindfulness as hopefully we'll find in a few minutes. So each of the big three frejoles of the trauma impact universe are responsive to, ironically, a cosmology, a philosophy, and some say a religion that developed 2,500 years ago in a world that needed to have to deal with overwhelming distress that you couldn't get away from. And it cashed in on the fascinating human dynamic, which is we humans, when we can't get away, we can still get away. 
in our heads. The only problem is that a lot of the ways we get away, we get away by shutting down awareness. It just so happens there's a way to quote get away, which is actually just changing the circumstance. And that changing the circumstance doesn't involve reducing awareness. Ironically, it involves increasing awareness. 